Welcome to Endor N-Gage Model Railway. Endor is now one step further on the way to having its points and signals operated via a £3.90 Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller. The Pi is now fixed in place and has control of the relevant point motors. I decided that underboard would be the best place to fit the new components, where there's plenty of space and there's access for maintenance. In order to make decisions about point switching, the Pico needs feedback about the actual point positions. We already had microswitches physically linked to all the points on the layout, connected to a 12 volt circuit, so I added some extra wires from them for the feedback. 12 volts is far too high voltage for input to the Raspberry Pi Pico, so I've got 12 volt relay modules in between the microswitches and the Pico. Some adhesive feet for circuit boards proved to be a very easy way to fasten the board of the relay modules to the underside of the door. They seem to have a good grip. When each point, and therefore its associated microswitch, are in a particular position, the positive of the 12 volt relay control circuit is connected to one of the control inputs for a relay. Those inputs are connected to optical couplers, which have a small LED in them, and using an input as low as 3 volts also works. This relay board didn't come with any documentation, and the details on its Amazon listing are sparse, but since its control inputs work at 3 volts, I think there's a risk that the little LEDs in the optical couplers will eventually burn out with a 12 volt signal, so I'm prepared that I may need to replace this. For now, it works. As with the position feedback inputs, the Raspberry Pi Pico can't be directly connected to the solenoid point motors. It needs to control them via relays. I know I had some relay module boards specifically for this, but after a few rounds of searching, I just couldn't find them. I even looked back at the material for one of my previous videos as proof that I did indeed have the modules. Things got desperate. I started emptying the railway room, box by box, in a thorough process of elimination only to eventually find them in pretty much the first box I'd looked in, the one I thought they ought to be in, and had re-looked in a few times already. I spent most of two evenings looking for them. As with the first board of relays, the adhesive feet made them easy to attach to the door. To connect cables to terminals I needed to use screwdrivers, but there wasn't enough height above the bits of sofa for me to work in. Even just poking the cables into the terminal slots was difficult because of the lack of manoeuvring space. The smallest section of sofa was at the back, partly to get the neatest look and partly because that's the most space efficient way to arrange the parts. I decided that the faff of rearranging the sofa bits would be worth a reduction in faff of working on underboard components. So, for the first time in a long time, Endor came out of the railway room and spent some time in the dining area. I only had to remove one part of the frame to rearrange the bits of sofa, which was a relief. I also wanted different switches for the new point control, so I removed the old ones at this point while they were easy to access. I also had another unrelated task on the to-do list, countersinking screws in the frame. You can see here that the frame doesn't go right up to the wall. That's because its screw heads are sticking out. When I put the frame together I didn't have the necessary countersinking drill bit. Just using a bigger standard bit resulted in splintering. Now was clearly an opportune time to get that fixed. I was just about able to get access without having to remove the sections of sofa. There were also screws to countersink at the front of the frame that I just hadn't got around to, and after a bit of a tidy up from all the searching for the missing relay modules, I had better access to more of the frame. So now, all of the screw heads on the outside of the frame are flush with the wood. Coming back to the point switches. The ones I removed latch into position. To start with I liked that because I thought it would be good that the switch indicated the position of the points, but I'm going to implement interlocking of the points and signals via the Raspberry Pi. So a command from the switch could be disregarded by the microcontroller if the associated points are considered to be locked in position, which would then leave a latched switch in a different position to its points. Even without interlocking, the switch is still got out of sync anyway, because sometimes they'd get operated, or just knocked, when the point motor power was off. Non-latching switches are the way to go here, and I'd bought a pack ages ago. One day I might want a swanky looking control panel, but point control unit Mark III is a simple plank of wood. I'm perfectly capable of making accurate calculations, measurements and marks, but apparently totally incapable of making a drill stay on the marks. Knowing that, I made guide holes with an awl, but that was no match for the will of my drill, which still managed to pull off course as soon as I got going. This piece of wood also turned out to be a few millimetres too thick for the switches, 
so I had to excavate a bit from the back of the wood. How deep each one goes is pure guesswork, so this isn't the neatest resulting control panel. But once on the frame, I was happier with how it looks than I'd feared it would look. With plenty of underboard wiring still to do, I sanded the edges of this panel ready for when I accidentally bumped my head on it. I found the switches strangely satisfying to play with even before they were connected to anything. They're mounted much more solidly than the old ones were, and each switch itself feels much more robust and makes a satisfying click when pushed either way. Only four of the nine points on Endor are going to be interlocked, at least for now. So five of these new switches are connected to the same wires that the old switches were. These ones make direct contact between point motor power and the point motors. The common for that circuit are these purple wires. The remaining switches connect to the Raspberry Pi rather than point motors, so their common connection is to the so-called ground of the Raspberry Pi. I find these switches so much more satisfying to operate than the old ones. The old ones make electrical contact when the lever is part way through its movement, so you get the resulting action a while before you finish pushing the lever, and it takes a bit of getting used to. With these ones, the feeling of the switch clicking into position, its sound, and the point motor action all feel like they happen at the same instant. I wasn't sure how best to mount the Pi, or connect to it. I settled on screwing it directly to the door and soldering screw terminals directly to it. There are actually quite a few options for things to buy to make these easy to connect to, but they cost twice as much as the Pi itself, which is mad. The Pi has all sorts of complicated fancy microscopic electronic capabilities for £4, then downright simple connector boards cost twice as much. The approach I've taken here doesn't allow all of the pins on the Pico to be used. Although small, the terminals are still quite wide compared with the Pi, and overlap either with the screw holes or surface components. I've since got some L-shaped DIP connectors for future Pi Pico projects. For underboard cable connections I experimented with sticky backed velcro to use with spring-loaded connectors, but it didn't work very well, it didn't hold firmly enough to be useful. Instead, I settled on this kind of screw-on sprung connector, which is really easy to use. I also bought some self-adhesive cable ties, which are good. The overall result looks like a colourful mess, but I think it's pretty much as neat as I can get it without wasting wire for the sake of neatness. Quite a few of these cables are from the previous setup, and several were spare offcuts. To enable the Pi to send signals to the relay module inputs, the negative side of the 12V DC relay circuit is connected to the Raspberry Pi's ground circuit. Those wires are grey. That negative connection comes into this set of connectors, with the common from each relevant switch connected to it via this brown one, which should have been grey. The up and down contact of each switch are connected to red and orange cables, each of which is an input to the Pico. Each end of a point motor is connected to red or orange cables, which go to a relay that determines whether the red or orange cable is connected to the relay's common. Each of those relays is connected to an output of the Pico. When the Pico decides to operate a point, it sets the relay to the appropriate way. The power for the point motor is delivered from another relay, which is linked on a connection to its normally open contact. That's important because it means if for some reason there's no power to the relay board, like when I forget to switch all of the plugs on, there won't be a constant supply of power to the point motors, which could burn them out. That relay is also connected to an output on the Pico, which briefly activates the relay when it wants to operate the points. Each point position feedback relay has its common connected to an input on the Pico, and its other terminals connected to ground and the 3.3 volt output of the Pico. In hindsight, I should only have needed to connect one or the other of those, but having both wired doesn't cause any harm. In total, nine relays are in use here. At some point in the past, I miscalculated how many I needed. I've got another board of four, but I don't need them for point switching. I realised that before sticking it onto the door, and instead used two of the five spare ones in the eight relay board. At every connection point that I've mentioned, wires could end up the wrong way around or the signals be programmed the wrong way around in the Pico. So getting all of this set up took a bit of trial and error, which I think is quicker than trying to plan it all perfectly beforehand. In my first successful setup, a lot of the relays needed to come on whenever I switched the circuits on. Most of the time, the points controlled by the Pico will be in their ahead position, so I've rejigged the connections and logic such that it corresponds to having the relays in their normally open positions, so they don't all consume power most of the time, and don't all click on at the same time. There's a slight delay now when operating the Pico control points, because the Pico isn't checking the state of the input switches all of the time. It's every tenth of a second, and the relays take a long time to react compared with a direct electrical connection to the switches. 
There are also several audible clicks from the relays, but overall it's still nicer to use than the old point switches. It's also very satisfying to have this working and in situ. It's been quite a while since I started on this interlocking project, though there's plenty left to go. For now, I've disabled the interlocking logic in the program, since there aren't actually any signals yet with which to interlock. That's all for now. Bye bye!